Welcome to Hebraic Insights in the Gospels. Join us every Sabbath on Zion Road Radio for a look at the life, deeds, and words of Yeshua Messiah and his followers. From the Torah-centric Hebraic perspective, they were originally lived and written in. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is. And walk in it. And you find rest for your soul. Today's program is in Matthew chapter 9. What is the kingdom of God? Does it have a name? Why couldn't the Pharisees recognize and accept Yeshua as Messiah? And did he see or treat them and the other religious leaders who were like them as representing all Israel? What is Messiah's parable of the new wine and the new wineskin about? And what's the difference between the new wineskin and the old wineskin? Is the new wineskin some new religious group that has spiritually replaced Israel as God's people? And is the old wineskin all Israel? Or could it be that the things Messiah actually said and did in the first century point to a messianic kingdom of Israel in that generation? Finally, what significance does the answer to these questions have for us today? Stay tuned through the end of this program to learn the answers from Eliyahu ben David's insight on Matthew chapter 9. And now, here's today's first scripture portion. Matthew chapter 9, verse 1 through verse 17. He, that is Messiah, entered into a boat and crossed over, and came into his own city. Behold! they brought to him a man who was paralyzed, lying on a bed. Yeshua, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, Son, cheer up! Your sins are forgiven you. Behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man blasphemes! Yeshua, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk? but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, Get up, and take up your mat, and go up to your house. He arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified Elohim, who had given such authority to men. As Yeshua passed by from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax collection office. He said to him, Follow me. He got up and followed him. It happened as he sat in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with Yeshua and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, Why does your rabbi eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Yeshua heard it, he said to them, Those who are healthy have no need for a physician, but those who are sick do. But you go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Then John's disciples came to him, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often? But your disciples don't fast. Yeshua said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch would tear away from the garment, and a worse hole is made. Neither do people put new wine into old wineskins, or else the skins would burst and the wine be spilled and the skins ruined. No, they put new wine into fresh wine skins, and both are preserved. And now, this important insight from Eliyahu ben David. Stand at the crossroads and look. Uh-huh. 
Hello once again, friends. We're moving now into Matthew chapter 9. We're going to do verse 1 through 17. And we're going to look into things Yeshua Messiah did and things he said which really pertain very much to us as well as to the believers back then. And our theme is new wine new wineskins. And I've subtitled this when it's time for something new. You know, when Messiah came, he brought something new. It was so new, <laughs> nobody had ever seen it before. And here's some of the things in Matthew 9 that were new to those people. He forgave a paralytic and healed him. Nobody ever saw that because in their religious system, they didn't believe that that could happen. They didn't believe that a person would be able to forgive someone on behalf of Yahweh, let alone then actually heal that person raise up a paralytic with a word. And when the people saw that, they gave glory to Elohim because he had given such authority among men. Now this is a very important point here because what they were seeing is that there is authority from Elohim through men that he's created of which the Son of Man Yeshua Messiah is a perfect example to do extraordinary things, even to declare someone forgiven. And when they saw that, they gave glory to Elohim for that, because that was totally outside their paradigm, something they never thought of, something they didn't think existed, certainly in the Pharisaic form of religion that they had in the first century. Nothing like this existed. This was something completely new that Messiah was introducing to them. And what about when he called Matthew the tax collector to follow him? And Matthew did. How new was that? Everybody hated the tax collectors. Still don't really like tax collectors much, do we? And yet, Yeshua called this most hated individual to come and follow him. And of course, that was new. And odious, really, to the Pharisees, the practitioners of the Pharisaic religion, they said that he allowed tax collectors and sinners to eat with his disciples and himself. In that form of religion, you would never do that. You would consider that defiling to do that. And the attitude that Yeshua had was completely different and no. And of course, that is that he came to call sinners to repentance. Even the sinners matter. He even cares about the sinners. That's a whole new thing in the first century. Another new thing that we read about, he and his Talmudim did not fast while he was with them. And if you look at this, in the context of the fact that 
in Pharisaical religion, they fasted often and they made a big religious show out of fasting. You can see how new it is that Messiah and his disciples did not fast. But you see, it's not only that they weren't fasting. This tells us something else about them. You know, Yeshua explained this, right? He said, well, while the bridegroom is with them, they're not going to fast. In other words, in the economy that Messiah brought, you do things that are appropriate to the situation. You do things that are according to what's happening. And this is okay with God. <laughs> this is basically how Messiah behaved. And in the Pharisaic religion, in any religion, really, that operates on this religious spirit, that's not how it works. You do certain things by rote. You have certain rules. You do that. It doesn't come from inside your heart, the way you're moved, appropriate to the circumstances and things that are happening. It's a totally different thing, you know? Worshiping Yahweh in spirit and in truth, moved by His Spirit, according to the truth, that's a totally different thing than attempting to serve Him through the rules of religion. So what Messiah was bringing was something new. Even though, you know, he told us he wasn't doing away with the Torah. It's not about that. It's about the form of worship. He was bringing something new, different than the form of worship that they were used to. And we know that the religious people didn't like that. They didn't like that he varied from these religious rules. Why? Seems out of order to them. You see, the religious rules help us to control God in our own minds. We think that if we follow the religious rules a certain way, then God has to do certain things. We can kind of keep him in a box where he can't get out and be all scary to us. So religionists don't want this kind of thing that Messiah was doing that is free and open and real, that requires a real relationship with Yeshua and with the Father in order to operate, in order to practice these things. They can't handle that. So that's what Messiah was talking about when he talked about the new wine and new wineskins, and new wine and old wineskins. See, that Pharisaic religion had been around for a while. It was like an old wineskin. Now, what is a wineskin? You know what a wineskin is, generally, from that time period? It's the stomach of an animal. And they take out all of the superfluous material and basically put it through the process that you use to create leather. But it's new leather. It has stretchiness to it. So then when they put the new wine in the new wineskin, what happens is, as the wine ferments, you know, it creates little bubbles and stuff, and it expands. And the new wineskin, being new, having this elasticity to it, expands with the new wine. So it can contain the new wine. It's a container that can contain the new wine. But what happens when the new wineskin becomes old? It's already been stretched out to its maximum, right? So, of course, the wine that originally was in it is long gone. So, 
if you put new wine in it that now is going to expand and bubble up and be full of life, it's going to burst that wineskin because that wineskin has no more room to stretch. And you know, as we're reading through the book of Matthew, we're seeing this phenomenon going on with the Pharisees. Yeshua is bringing forth all this new wine. It's full of life. It's bubbling up. It's expanding. But that Pharisaic form of religion can't handle that. It can't hold that. So this wineskin is just bursting everywhere. The Pharisees are just saying, you can't do that. Oh, you can't do that. No, that's wrong. Don't do that. They can't handle it. They can't handle the new wine. The new wine required a new container, a new wineskin. And that wineskin was actually the Messianic Kingdom administration that Messiah was building with the 12 disciples, with the 70, with the new covenant that we're going to get to as we continue along with the leadership of the house of David, reestablishing the kingdom under the Messiah, the messianic kingdom in the earth. This was a new wineskin that was made to contain this new wine of Messiah. And this is a parable telling us about it. Well, you know, today we have something similar going on. Yahweh, through Yeshua, is releasing new wine. Restoration is coming forth from the throne. Can the old Pharisaic wineskin contain that? No. What about the old Christian wineskin? The old religion? Can that contain this new wine, that too is too staid to be able to contain the new wine of restoration from Messiah. Only a new nation of Israel, the remnant nation of Israel, that is being brought forth by Messiah can hold the new wine. A new wineskin to hold the new wine. And so we see here at the end of the age, this is the thing that is happening. Now, some people would look at this and they say, yeah, but, you know, I don't really see that on a grand scale. It just doesn't seem that big that that's what's happening. Well, if you looked at Messiah and his 12 disciples in the first century, you might do like the Pharisees did and say, well, this is not such a big thing. If we can just stamp out the leader here, this will all be over. Just a flash in the pan. This is how Yahweh works, though. Things start relatively small, but it's about quality, and it's about the new wine. And this has power and will continue to grow and accomplish his purpose. And I think, you know, all of us should pray for that. We should all pray for more of the new wine, the revelation, to come to Yahweh's people and for his people to be formed into that new wineskin that can contain that revelation and make it real in the world. So we're talking about New wine and new wineskins, and what happens when it's time for something new? Stay tuned. Eliyahu has more to share in the book of Matthew after this short break. Enjoying this episode of Hebraic Insights in the Gospels? 
Want to hear more teachings from Eliyahu Ben David? Tune in to our 24-7 internet radio station, Zion Road Messianic Radio. You can catch the latest episodes of Hebraic Insights in the Gospels before they're released as a podcast, learn more about what Zion Ministry teaches from our other programs, and listen to a host of uplifting songs from our independent Messianic music artists. To tune in to our station, go to zion.org. That's T-S-I-Y-O-N dot O-R-G. Or search for Zion Road Messianic Radio. Again, that's Zion spelled T-S-I-Y-O-N in your favorite internet radio app or station directory. Don't miss the latest episodes. Go to tsiyon.org and check the station's schedule to see what's playing. Welcome back. The next portion is Matthew chapter 9, verse 18 through verse 38, which reads, Well, he, that is Messiah, told these things to them. Behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. Yeshua got up and followed him, as did his disciples. Behold, a woman who had an issue of blood for twelve years came behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. For she said within herself, If I just touch his garment, I will be made well. But Yeshua turning around and seeing her said, Daughter, cheer up, your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. When Yeshua came into the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the crowd in noisy disorder, he said to them, Make room, because the girl isn't dead, but sleeping. They were ridiculing him. But when the crowd was put out, he entered in, took her by the hand, and the girl arose. The report of this went out into all that land. As Yeshua passed by from there, two blind men followed him, calling out and saying, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he had come into the house, the blind men came to him. Yeshua said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They told him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it done to you. Their eyes were opened. Yeshua strictly commanded them, saying, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread abroad his fame in all that land. As they went out, behold, a mute man who was demon-possessed was brought to him. When the demon was cast out, the mute man spoke. The multitudes marveled, saying, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, By the prince of demons he cast out demons. Yeshua went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every sickness among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were harassed and scattered like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest indeed is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore that Adonai of the harvest will send out laborers into his harvest. And now, here's Eliyahu ben David to teach us about that portion. Ask for the ancient parts Ask where the good We're continuing on in the book of Matthew, specifically Matthew 9. What we're going to find here is Yeshua proclaiming and demonstrating the kingdom. And this is really amazing, some of the things that he did. We're going to go through those tonight. And as we're moving through the book of Matthew, Now the picture is starting to fill out more and more. 
And there really is a bigger picture here. Well, this is all about Yeshua proclaiming and demonstrating the good news of the kingdom. Another thing that it shows me about this lesson, Matthew 9, and the rest of the things that Yeshua did is the connection between what we saw in Matthew 9.17, where Yeshua mentions the new wine requires a new wineskin. We said that new wineskin was and is the Messianic kingdom. And then as we go along, we have these various events that it lays out for us. And then it sums up what Yeshua did as he went from place to place throughout the land, teaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, healing every disease, and of course, casting out demons as well. So these things are connected. The new wineskin and the kingdom are connected in the same chapter. And what's actually happening here is Messiah is demonstrating for us the kingdom. So let's look at this part a little more closely where it talks about him proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. What is this word proclaim? In some Bibles it says preach. Some Bibles say herald. And it's from the Greek word heruso. And the Thayer definition makes it very plain as to what it is. It's specifically officiating as a herald. Now we don't use that term very much anymore. But at one time, everybody knew what a herald was before we had, you know, television and internet news and stuff. The herald was the official person that told you what was happening. So part of the definition is to proclaim after the manner of a herald. That is to officially announce. Officially announce. And... It says, always with the suggestion of formality, gravity, and authority. So this isn't just somebody passing on gossip or something. This is an official announcement. That's what Messiah was doing when he was proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. That's the same as making an official announcement of the good news of the kingdom. And another part of the meaning here is to publish, proclaim openly something which has been done. That's what news is, right? Something that has already happened. The good news is that it has happened. A little more. We're talking about the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom. What is the kingdom? The kingdom, first of all, is Israel. If you doubt that, read Exodus 19.6, where Yahweh is presenting the covenant to Israel. He says, you should be to me a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation. Israel, in the covenant, is the kingdom. But we know there's more about the kingdom because as the scriptures progress, we have Yahweh putting the kingdom of Israel into the hands of David and his line. 2 Samuel 7.16 Yahweh says to David, your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. So, when we get to the book of Matthew, and it's talking about the kingdom, 
It's not introducing some brand new idea about going to heaven. It's talking about what the kingdom has been all along as it's developed through the scriptures. And the kingdom is Israel in the hands of the descendants of David and specifically, as we go through the prophecies, we find it tells us about the Messiah who would come and reestablish the kingdom. So, why did that have to happen? Once Israel was established, why did the Messiah have to come and reestablish the kingdom? Well, all these stories the two blind men, they're Israel. The daughter with a flow of blood for 12 years is Israel. The daughter who was sleeping and was brought back to life, it's Israel. All of these situations are telling us also about Israel. Why two blind men? Two houses of Israel who had been blind, right? They didn't see. Isn't that what happened to the two houses of Israel? They became spiritually blind. But finally their sight is restored when they call on the son of David. Duh. Isn't that exactly what the Scriptures tell us? happens with the houses of Israel in the book of Ezekiel. We even have them as dry bones brought back to life. Just like the little girl. Everybody thought those dry bones were dead. We're never going to come back to life. The people ridiculing Messiah. Every time that they ridicule Israel, and say, Israel is done away. Are they not ridiculing the Messiah, whom the Scriptures say is going to bring Israel back to life? You know, the story, it's right out of all the prophets. And he brings that girl back as a great miracle. This is the remnant of Israel, friends. The daughter of Israel coming back. That's what that is. The woman, a flow of blood for 12 years. 12, not 10, not 13, 12 years. 12 tribes of Israel. And what about a flow of blood? Her life, leaving her. Why? Why? Separation from the covenant. What was her need? She could not restore that herself. She needed, yes, to have faith in the covenant, but she needed to have faith in the Messiah of the covenant who could restore her life, make her clean again, and set her back on the path so she could cheer up. That is every scattered Israelite out there. And when Messiah says, cheer up, he's saying it to all of us. It's all the kingdom. It's the kingdom. The kingdom of Israel. That's the whole thing here. It's what it's about. The kingdom. Messiah, not only proclaiming it in words, but proclaiming it through actions. Because why? What was Messiah's good news that he was announcing? Yohanan, John, the immerser, had a message that he was announcing. He said, the kingdom is at hand, which meant it's about to come. It's not here quite yet, but it's about to come. 
Messiah proclaimed, announced the good news of the kingdom. In other words, he's announcing the kingdom is here. The Davidic kingdom is here. And he proved it was. And let me tell you, wherever Messiah is, the kingdom is there because he is the king. And that's what he came to do, to restore the kingdom to Israel. But not everyone who was of Israel, that is, of Israelite blood, could enter into the kingdom. Well, they were allowed to. But what did he constantly say? Do you believe? Do you have faith? Do you believe I can do this? You see, if you see this picture, realize you are meant to be part of Israel. And your problems and troubles out there in the world, in the exile, he can deal with those. You just have to trust him. You have to know the kingdom is real. And yes, he is going to come in the clouds. He is going to restore the rule of the kingdom over the whole world. But he already established the kingdom. We can find that here in the book of Matthew. And for those who believe, the power of the kingdom has been released. And he is calling to us. Even as we read these verses in Matthew that speak about the remnant of Israel. These verses speak to us. You have been listening to Hebraic Insights in the Gospels. Further teachings and study materials on various related topics and others can be found at our membership site, Zion Tabernacle. Sign up is free. Just go to zion.net. That's T-S-I-Y-O-N dot N-E-T. Or click the membership link on the Zion Road website. New programs on the Gospels will be airing every Sabbath on Zion Road Radio. Join us next Shabbat to learn more in the book of Matthew. Shabbat Shalom! Stand at the crossroads and look Ask for the ancient Shit.